This video is sponsored by the JVOS Mindset. JVOS is seven hours of content which will help you change your thinking about jujitsu. It will change your jujitsu forever. Understanding the key principles of the JVOS Mindset are going to improve your game exponentially. Get your copy today. Welcome to the Master Plan Lecture Series. My name is Javier Vasquez, and today I want to talk about something that uh, will hopefully be able to get your mind around um, transitionally where you should be going. I call this positional relationships. Now, there are certain positions that work very well together, back and forth, forward and back. And I want to discuss a little bit more closely the relationships within particular positions or the relationship that particular posi positions have. So mount top and back mount have a relationship. You can go back and forth between them. And if you do it enough, I would consider this to be a baking pattern. So you can attack the neck, the person escapes, puts it back on the ground, you're back to mount, back and forth. The mount also has a relationship with the side mount. And I would consider this to be called, they can, obviously they can go back and forth. And I would consider this to be called an escape or transition, right? So from mount, from side mount, you can transition to the mount. And from the mount, you can escape to the side mount. Side mount, quarter side mount, those go back and forth. They have a relationship. Turtle flat and quarter side mount, they have a relationship. You can go back and forth between those. Turtle flat and turtle top, those also have a relationship. Those go back and forth. Turtle top, you can pull the hip and come back to quarter side mount. Of course, those can go back and forth. And this sequence, this side mount, quarter side mount, turtle flat, turtle top, back to quarter side mount, this is also a little bit longer, but it is also a baking pattern. You can really make people tired just by kind of putting them through these transitions. The side mount to leg locks, that's an escape counter. So say, for example, the opponent starts, put, you're in side mount, the opponent starts to put you back in the guard by bringing the knee across your hip. You can lay back and attack the legs. So that's, a, that's an escape counter. So the person on top is countering um, the escape attempt for, from the person on the bottom. And from guard to mount, I would consider this a blessing, right? So anytime you can go from the guard into the mount, like a, using a, a bump sweep or something like that, that's a blessing. And um, again, th those are, you know, it's not so common. That's why it's a blessing. So, um, so hopefully this kind of gives you a little bit better of an idea of how positions go together. And a lot of times what, what tends to happen, and when I really started to write this stuff down and really jot this stuff down, um, it changed my attack plan. Because it started for me from turtle. So from the turtle position, you know, traditionally you're just taught, get the hooks in, you know, take the back. And... I think a lot of this has to do, a lot of this mindset has to do with people, people would think, well, you have, you know, both arms and both legs to control. That's part of it. And in a competition sense, uh, to go from turtle to back mount, you get points. So it's kind of like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's encouraged to go from turtle to the back mount, right? Because of the hooks. But really, in a lot of ways, turtle is a much better finishing position then the back. And then I also realized that we would go from, again, turtle to the back rather than from the mount to the back, mount to back and back to mount. That is a more cohesive relationship than it is to go from turtle to back. I mean, you can go from turtle to back. Yeah, sure. But I think as far as like an effective baking pattern, of course, to, to go mount back, mount back is, is far more frustrating. So when I started to change the importance and going from turtle to side mount, turtle to quarter side mount and put and linking those groups together, it really started to change my idea of what my attack plan was. And it started to actually make things a little bit more economical because I was actually fighting from positions that required less energy to work from. And I think that this is a very big deal that people just kind of go you know, the way that they're taught, but 
really certain positions are not very economical. So for example, guard, although it is the best position to be in when you're on the bottom, it's not a super economical place to attack from. I mean, you can, but if you're, say for example, you're attacking a triangle and you're using both of your legs to control the, the, the opponent's head and arm, and the opponent's fighting and they're stacking you, it's not a very economical place to be. You can do it, you can gut your way through, it, and there are techniques that work from guard, of course, but, you know, as far as efficiency, sometimes guard is not the most efficient place to be. And 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 a lot of times it's it rather than spending the time from guard trying to sweep and submit, sometimes it's a little bit more economical to try to go from guard to turtle and then from turtle up to your feet so you can potentially disengage. So when I started to kind of you know link relationships between the positions, um, not just what we're standing taught, but really what works practically together it started to make a very big difference in my attack plan and in my conditioning. If you like this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe down below. Leave a comment if you have any questions or you want to just give a shout out to me and, 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 and say what's up. Go ahead and leave that in the comment section. Talk to you soon.